What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE Saudi shows used to be ridiculous. This is a very true statement just from the title. The Saudi shows were never meant to be shows that had any type of continuity with what was going on on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. They were just put together because the Saudi, you know, government wanted certain wrestlers and stars to be at these shows. That's pretty much what it was. So you would end up with legends past their prime wrestling yes it would be a dream match but then you watch the match and it's horrible it's awful it's one of their worst matches you know so it's just one of those type of things where you know money superseded any type of logic or creativity now in recent years the saudi shows have been much better in terms of quality of matches that we've um, been getting but at the same time you know there's still certain things that don't make sense we got crown jewel that's coming up it doesn't make sense to introduce a champion versus champion uh type match and whoever wins from the you know respective brand the top champion they end up getting this uh crown jewel championship which will never really be defended it's just like a you know a a title to put up in your trophy case at home it's a cool title but it doesn't really have no weight to it you know what i'm saying the same if you guys remember the greatest royal rumble that was one of the worst things ever and whoever won the greatest royal rumble guess what you got a greatest royal rumble championship belt it doesn't mean anything you can't defend it it's just a belt to have to say you won the greatest royal rumble ever i don't know it for me it gives that kind of vibe even though the recent saudi shows for the most part have been uh pretty much entertaining and you know it, we've gotten some good wrestling out of it so we're gonna go back down memory lane unfortunately appreciate all love sport let's get right into it man because not too long ago Hold saudi on. let me let me in just a few days, the WWE is heading back to Saudi Arabia for another pay-per-view, and for the past few years, surprisingly, Saudi pay-per-views have definitely given us some fun and noteworthy wrestling moments, which is crazy because not too long ago, Saudi pay-per-views used to be f ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The first five Saudi pay-per-views are some of the weirdest, some of the worst, most confusing, just straight-up disgusting wrestling shows that have ever taken Facts. place. From horrible traumatizing matches to insane booking decisions, Saudi pay-per-views used to make no sense whatsoever, and they definitely deserve a look back at. The first ever Saudi show took place back in April of 2018, and with more propaganda than you can possibly imagine, it was the greatest Royal Rumble. Fresh mm -hmm. off signing a 10-year deal worth a billion dollars, the Saudi regime wanted their wrestling shows to be these big, massive, large-scale events, and for the first show, they wanted a 50-man Royal Rumble, which yeah. honestly sounds more like a perverted fetish than a wrestling match, but it, it, it's fine. But regardless, the greatest Royal Rumble was the first event, and nobody knew what the hell this was going to be going into it. Taking place just three weeks after WrestleMania, this was either going to be better than WrestleMania, or the most expensive house show the world has ever seen. Pretty With 50,000 fans in attendance, it ended up being the world's most expensive house show. Pyro up the ass, a huge stage, more mm -hmm. pyro, John Cena versus Triple H out of nowhere in 2018, Undertaker versus Rusev in a casket match. We got a random four-way ladder match in the middle of the show, which honestly wasn't that bad, and a WWE title match that ended in a double count. Now, as you can see, nothing of note really happened here. There were no title changes. You know, everyone thought going in that this was going to be the night where Roman won the title after losing at Mania. Uh, Nope. nope it just ended up being a meaningless house show in every single way it just happened to take place in a stadium in saudi arabia saudi fans got to see legends like cena and triple h for the first time propaganda was spread the fans got to make their little <laughs> snapchats you know the rich saudi not the propaganda was spread i love that <laughs> folks got to sit on their sofas ringside and flex their status and be on their phones the whole time uh to say this show was unimportant would be an understatement and the main event was the 50-man rumble and i gotta say this is the weirdest most trippy wrestling match I've ever gone back and revisited this this feels like a fever dream this was a 77 minute match making this a five hour show yes a five hour show and this match featured 50 wrestlers coming out and 80 percent of them i swear to god the saudi crowd had no idea who they were never heard of them they had japanese sumo wrestler named hiroki sumi pull up because apparently the saudi regime wanted yokozuna to appear uh but they didn't know he'd been dead for 18 years so the wwe was like all right you, you want yokozuna here's a random japanese sumo wrestler you you can't make this shit up daniel bryan wrestled for an hour and 16 minutes and his poor chest got turned into ground beef and he still mm -hmm. didn't win the match hornswoggle came back for this the great Kali tried walking out for this and of course titus o'neill <laughs> almost died from under the ring that's the best thing about this this saudi show titus world slide man 
That's the best thing about this entire event. The tightest world slide. Best part of the show, without a doubt. Why the hell was he so excited to enter this match? I will never know. Since the match named 50 wrestlers, they literally had to resort to NPCs to fill up the match. Uh, they had a guy named Dan Matha enter the match. The poor guy doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Just a Damn. weird, random, surreal $50 million house show that was five hours long created to please the Saudi regime. A show that genuinely felt like it took place in a dystopia, but all in all, it was whatever, okay? There was no match here that made you question your fandom. It wasn't the worst show ever. It just felt like a random little side quest that the company was doing, and if you wanted to ignore it, you honestly could have. But all of that was going to change with the next Saudi pay per view, six months later in October, when the WWE held the first ever Crown Jewel event. And there was no way to ignore this shit. After the greatest rumble, the Saudi <laughs> regime wanted more. They didn't want a yep. glorified house show. They didn't want a rumble again. They didn't want Yokozuna coming back from the dead. Nah, 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 nah. They wanted legends. They wanted big time matches. They wanted attention away from the... And that's pretty much whatever they wanted. They, WWE was going to try to accommodate and book. Simple as that. The fact that they killed a journalist and that the entire world was looking down on them. And the WWE, despite it being a PR nightmare, despite the US government asking them not to go to Saudi, they were gonna give them exactly what they wanted. Uh -huh. Crown Jewel 2018 at first was just once again another large scale house show. It was centered around this tournament called the WWE World Cup. The Saudis wanted their show to feel important again, so a trophy was created and a random meaningless tournament was taking place on the show random to determine the best wrestler in the world. And with solid talent all over the tournament, the first two hours of the show were perfectly fine. Yeah, the matches were short TV style matches and it just felt like a Monday Night Raw episode, but it was totally fine. In between the tournament matches, we got a decent little title match between AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, which was good. Mm -hmm. And going into the final three matches of the show, in terms of just the wrestling, it was honestly a 6 out of 10, a 5 out of 10 decent house show type of event. But what this company did for the final three matches on this night were, were straight up war crimes. The third match from the top was for the vacant Universal Championship. Brock Lesnar Ooh. versus Braun Strowman for the title. Two big meaty men clashing for the title. Two freaks of nature. A crowd that was going to be hungry for these two to tweak. It had the potential to be a crazy spectacle. But no. No, we don't, we don't deserve that. No, instead we get Brock Lesnar hitting five F5s in two minutes and winning the match. He grabbed the belt and he got out of there so fast out of the country that it's... Uh, I forgot this even happened. I kind of just mentally threw it in the back uh of my brain you know how you have thoughts you just throw away into the trash and you don't remember until someone makes you remember that's exactly what happened i forgot this happened this is stupid this was dumb oh my it was this is the time period of when in doubt throw the title back on brock until we were able to position roman to get over to to finally dethrone him it was it was dumb theme song didn't even start playing okay I, I you know what i guess maybe we were the idiots for having expectations right like it was 2018 brock lesnar after all but then it was time for the co-main event which somehow ended up being an even bigger slap in the face in the finals of the World Cup tournament, it was The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. Yes, whatever, yeah. it's fine, okay? The Miz, before the match, attacked Ziggler. He ambushed him, he jumped on him, and he went off to get the little advantage. But when jumping out of the ring, they did an angle where he landed wrong and he got injured. So the next thing you know, you got two idiots before their match in the co main event on the floor, crying, screaming, dying, while the Saudi fans are laughing at them in the first few rows. And just when you thought this company couldn't get any stupider, they get stupider. After a six match tournament that took two hours to complete, they had Miz forfeit the finals, get carried out, and they had 50 year old Shane McMahon wearing jeans and a tank top who just of course happened to be ringside take his place. This was a thing, y'all. This was a thing. Like I say, the current Shoddy shows we've been having are leagues better. And even then, they have their issues. But they're leagues better than this nonsensical booking we were subjected to back then. The finals of the tournament out of nowhere became Dolph Ziggler versus an out of shape Shane McMahon, 50 years old, wearing jeans, who just proceeded to sweat everywhere, throwing the worst punches we'd ever seen. And like two minutes into the match, I swear to God, he was so red and pink, he looked like Mr. Krabs when he lost his shell. He hits a coast to coast, <laughs> and I'm surprised he didn't have a stroke, and Shane McMahon wins the tournament in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. What the fuck? Shane McMahon is declared the best wrestler in the world, and all you see is him running around with his Mickey Mouse trophy, looking like the biggest bozo we have ever seen. 
They spent two plus hours running this tournament that had genuine talent in there, and they did this. Like, okay, we knew the tournament was meaningless, we knew it was stupid, we knew it was whatever, but this is just a next level slap in the face. This is just embarrassing. I'm sorry. To have 50 year old Shane McMahon go in there and win in two minutes, like, wh what are we doing here? Awful. But then it was time for the main event, and just when you thought this show couldn't get more embarrassing, it, it did. <laughs> it, it, it definitely did. It was the return of HBK, it was the return of Shawn Michaels. After 8 years of being retired, 8 years of declining countless returns for dream matches, HBK was finally back and what was supposed to be a sacred moment, a special moment, was HBK coming back for that sweet, sweet Saudi payday. Shawn Michaels was back in 2018 and he was teaming up with his good friend Triple H to take on The Undertaker. I really do wish. I was excited for them, for him to return, but in hindsight, I wish he would have stayed retired. I'm just being dead ass. I really wish he would have stayed retired because his last match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 26 prior to, that was a perfect send-off. Perfect send-off. This match? No. Taker and Kane, and with every single wrestler in the match over the age of 50 years old, millions of wrestling fans around the world were genuinely traumatized. What the hell do I even say about this match? What the hell can I say about this match? You had The Undertaker and Kane who looks so out of shape and so old that it, it, it genuinely hurt to watch. Kane who has so much CTE at this point, he was actually fresh off winning a damn election. What the hell was he doing in Saudi Arabia? I, I, I don't know, shouldn't he be running his little county? Undertaker at this point was just down bad. He was so desperate, he was out there chasing just one final classic match so he could finally end his career on good terms. It, it ain't happening tonight, buddy. And Shawn Michaels? Guys, Shawn Michaels was bald, bro. <laughs> our childhoods died in front of our eyes before this match even started. Then the actual match started, and our childhoods basically got pissed on. This match had a combined age of 206 years old, and it was all up to Triple H to carry the match. Uh, the, the issue was he got injured five minutes yep. into it, and the rest was history. Yep. HBK, who hadn't wrestled in eight years, who now looked like 2007 Britney Spears, had to carry a match with a man who should have retired long ago and an out of shape CT infested Knox County mayor. And next thing you know, Kane's mask is falling oh, off. Oh man, this was so bad. Oh my god. Uh, like, Triple H is already injured. They have to improvise the rest of the match. This was this was beyond bad, bro. And he's rolling around like he's actually on fire. Every single move that was done looked bad. Suplexes were looking bad. Every every move just looked like a botch. Poor Triple H tore his pec and could barely move and had to wrestle the entire match with his left arm. Undertaker and Kane in their old age had to try to catch HBK doing a moonsault. Uh, how do you think oh. that went? Oh, and by the way, did I mention HBK was bald? This match went on for 30 minutes. 30 why? Why were these senior citizens wrestling for 30 minutes? Ooh. Who thought this was a good idea? How do you conceive that idea to have them out here for 30 minutes? Senior citizens at the park don't walk for 30 minutes, bro. Ain't no way Undertaker gonna have a 30 minute match. Eventually, it got so bad and ugly in there, they couldn't even do simple moves anymore. Like, they tried doing an Irish whip and everyone just almost died. I hear falling everywhere like Jenga pieces. It was like a higher power oh. made sure that everything that could go wrong in this match went wrong in this match. HBK went and wrestled in 8 years, doing his best to not tarnish his legacy and save this match i mean he, he tried but now nah, like eventually the crowd is laughing at them okay eventually it's just sad it's traumatizing and just embarrassing 20 minutes into it they can barely move triple h is injured taker is depressed because he just wants to have one more classic so he can retire instead he's in saudi arabia doing this Shawn michaels came back for this and even when it was time for the match to be over it was the most depressing pedigree i have ever seen in my yep. life ladies and gentlemen that was Crown Jewel, and this was the WWE in Saudi Arabia in one match. Ooh. The Saudi regime wanted a spectacle, they definitely got a spectacle. And this match capped off the first two shows of the WWE-Saudi partnership. We went from getting a pretty whatever harmless house show to one of the most embarrassing pay-per-views of all time that left every single person watching depressed. What a time to be alive. Seven months later in June of 2019, the WWE was ready to come back to Saudi Arabia for the third pay-per-view. It was Super Showdown 2019 and going into the show you would assume that the WWE and the Saudis would come together and see that the shows they just did weren't exactly working and that maybe it's time they change their approach for the third show. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, Super Duper Showdown 2019 might even be worse. Yeah. Super Duper Supreme Showdown 2019 <laughs> is Super just Duper as Supreme. if not even more disgusting than Crown Jewel. Uh. These idiots, I swear, these idiots learned nothing, absolutely nothing from Crown Jewel. Sure, we got a little cute Randy Orton versus Triple H match. Yeah, we got some decent B-level title defenses, but after this night, 
after this show was over, it was hard to convince yourself to still be a WWE fan. Yeah. We had to endure 15 minutes of sweaty meatball versus Roman Reigns. Shane McMahon dominating, oh, dominating Roman Reigns. I forgot this was a thing too. Good God. Reigns rest holds for hours, punches, MMA submissions because he took a jiu-jitsu class once, and so much sweat dripping that I thought my tears from watching got on the screen. And of course, Shane McMahon beat Roman Reigns. Yo, yeah. just one of the stupidest, one of the most laughable, just uh, insane matches I've ever seen in my life. Why did this happen? Why was it this long? What? what and then, hey, that classic is over. Let's all go watch Lars Sullivan take on three Lucha wrestlers. I have never seen a crowd this quiet in my life. J just <laughs> listen to this. Oh, are you, are you having enough fun yet? You know what? It's time for the 51-man battle royal. What? What is up with them and their obsession with 50 sweaty men in the ring? What, what are we doing here? <laughs> but nothing, nothing, nothing will beat the main event that took place on this night. You thought DX versus Taker and Kane was bad last time? You thought they would actually learn from that and not put senior citizens in the main event of a Saudi show? No, Goldberg nope. versus The Undertaker in 2019, live from Saudi Arabia. Ooh. What could possibly go wrong? I swear, I feel like I'm about to have an aneurysm at this point. Who the hell booked this? Who thought this was a good idea in 2019? My dead grandma would know not to book this shit. <laughs> oh Goldberg, who hadn't wrestled in two years, gave himself CTE before the match even started. Do you hear me? This man hit his head on the door to get himself hyped up before his entrance like a Neanderthal, and he literally started bleeding before the match started. And <laughs> this nigga gave himself CTE before the match. It's not funny, bro. But when you really think about it, Goldberg literally thought it was a good idea to hype himself up by banging his head on the damn door to get ready for this match. I know that's what he probably used to do back in the day when he was younger, faster, stronger, you know, less concussions probably back then. But when you're older, man, can't be just doing that and thinking there ain't gonna be no consequences. Oh, I'm so glad I never watched this match in its entirety. Woo! So glad I've never seen it all the way through because I probably would have just like legitimately probably stop watching wwe for a while <laughs> i made his entrance concussed what could possibly go wrong just one of the wrestlers already has a concussion before the match started meanwhile undertaker poor undertaker he's old he is cooked he should not be in the ring unless you have someone who can carry him and i mean figuratively and literally this poor guy is just chasing the bag and he's chasing that one last classic now i don't know why he thought he was gonna have a classic with goldberg but apparently he did so they go out there right and next thing you know Goldberg hits his head in the ring post two minutes into oh the match. Two God. minutes into the match, this man is double concussed. He has a double-double. Goldberg is bleeding everywhere, right? He has no idea where the hell he is. He doesn't know if he's in Saudi Arabia, Dubai, or Africa. He has no idea. Taker can barely hit the choke slump, but you're like, you know what? At least the match will be over soon. It'll be quick. It'll be painless. He gets up Goldberg. He goes for the tombstone. And of course, Goldberg's head hits the ground again with oh. the tombstone. He's got a CTE hat trick at this oh point. He got a triple-double. He, he's done. He is dead. Just end the match. It's over. I don't care if it's been three minutes just end the match at least the fans had to see taker do his greatest hits so now it's goldberg's turn to hit him with a finisher because we have to trade finishers and he grabs taker yeah. and he goes for the jackhammer and boom no no goldberg oh. can carry undertaker literally and figuratively oh and he drops taker on his neck taker at this very moment could have easily had his neck broken so yeah. now both men are dead and it's like please for the love of god just end this okay we we filled the mission we tried our best this is not it just end the match you hit your finisher just call an audible whatever no taker kicks out for some reason I, I i will never understand this they have two 52 year old men do the tombstone oh. reverse spot of course it doesn't work <laughs> out roman reigns and taker couldn't pull this off two years ago at mania why the hell will goldberg and taker be able to pull this off <laughs> both men are on the floor there is so much cte it doesn't even make any so sense taker just yeah. drops him with the worst choke slam ever yeah. and honestly at that point oh. respect okay at least he even pulled that off pins him goldberg is so out of it he hooks his own leg taker doesn't even grab his leg he just raises his own leg in the air for no reason just lets it hang that is how out of it he was and thankfully it was over <laughs> the worst one-on-one -on -one wrestling match oh i've ever seen God. in my life these two men could have died like no jokes aside oh these two men God. could have easily been paralyzed Max. why the hell did this match take place who thought it was a good idea and why did this need to be 10 minutes Yo, I'm gonna be honest, I, I still can't believe it. I can't believe the fact that Goldberg concussed himself before the match even started. 
that is insane how does that happen and i can't believe they thought doing a reverse tombstone spot with these two men was a good idea this is the worst match i've ever seen like no hands down not one of no this this is 100 percent the worst match i've ever seen in my life as shameless as embarrassing and that's the thing i just saw the clips and i was like oh i'm oh this is awful and i'm glad i didn't watch it as a crown jewel match was this was 10 times oh. worse. This was another level. This is surreal oh. to go back and watch this and try to have your brain comprehend this actually happened. But hey, apparently, this is what Saudi Arabia wanted. They wanted big time matches. They wanted Goldberg. They wanted Undertaker. Here you go. I, I can't. I can't. All of these shows just felt like they took place in a simulation. None of these feel real. Going back and watching these, none of them feel real. You have the combination. You have a deadly combination. You have the WWE who clearly doesn't care about these shows. They don't treat them like canon. And you have Saudi Arabia who just wants all these big time matches from wrestlers from the 80s and 90s. You know, they don't care how it goes down. And you just combine that with how bad wrestling was at this point. Worst combination ever. I, I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I, I can't. I've lost too many brain cells. It's just been three shows. I, I, I can't. The, the next two shows were, of course, were useless anyway. Like, after the next show, they just continued the clownery. They did Kane Velasquez versus Brock Lesnar, yeah. which lasted two minutes with Kane tapping out just to get Brock Lesnar his win back from the UFC, which was real, but this is fake. But, yeah. of course, Kane tapped off camera so we didn't see him tap. What are we? What are we doing here? Tyson Fury versus Braun Strowman, because woo, mainstream coverage, big stars. No, nobody cared. Nope. The one good thing they did was that Crown Jewel 2019. For once, we had a title change. For once, a major title uh, change, mm. and there was finally something of importance happening. And the Fiend beat Seth Rollins for the WWE title, which made everyone happy. It was a really cool moment, despite the red lighting, which I, I wasn't a fan of. But you know, it definitely made the yeah, the red lighting was fucking overkill. The fans tolerate Crown Jewel, and it really raised the perception of the event. Like, yo, something important happened for once at the Saudi shows and it was a good step in the right direction uh the next saudi show ended with goldberg squashing the fiend and winning the title in two minutes what, what the hell was wrong with this <laughs> when in doubt we don't learn our lesson <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Company, bro. Goldberg, the man who almost killed The Undertaker two years before this was just, they just let, let him go back to Saudi Arabia. He should have been a wanted man in Saudi, first of all. He just goes into Saudi, beats The Fiend, wins the title, and, and and there you go. Great. No, like, guys, I'm serious. How did we survive this? How did we watch these shows? How did we put up with them? How did we tolerate this? Like, these shows are were actually the most brain-dead shows I've seen in my life. You take the Saudis wanting big matches and old stars and their obsession with Goldberg and all these old wrestlers, and you combine that with Vince man who was on crack and would do anything for the 50 million dollars this is what we got it is a miracle that the product is where it's at today okay just five years ago remember this is what we had to watch weekly this these were the saudi shows we were getting five years ago at least these days the product is good enough where they don't have to resort to goldberg or something to come mm -hmm. back and pop a saudi show now we have logan paul but no, like, I'm done. I can't. I am never, ever watching these old Saudi shows ever again. Even, like I said, even though Saudi shows still feel weird to this day, there's still a sideshow nature to them. J just remember what they used to be, okay? Just, just, just remember this. Now, like, Goldberg beating The Fiend in Saudi is, it's still one of the most insane things. And they did that on purpose. That's the one place where they could have done that, and Goldberg wouldn't have gotten booed. Yeah. In the comments down below, let me know what is, in your opinion, the worst WWE Saudi pay-per-view moment. Is it Brothers of Destruction and DX going out there? Which, honestly, as much as I roasted it, when you look at this stuff that happened after that, was it was it really that bad? Yeah, no, it was. <laughs> it was. But yeah, let me know down below, in your opinion, what is the worst uh, WWE Saudi pay-per-view moment? Thank you guys for watching. This was a good one, man. Go ahead and give this one a like. Uh, shit, the worst one. And once again, these horrible moments, I didn't see. Outside of the the Goldberg situation, Goldberg and uh and Bray, I did see that. That one infuriated me. So it would have to be that one. If I watched the other two live, the the Goldberg versus Undertaker, if I watched that live, it could have been that. If I watched the Brothers of Destruction versus DX, if I would have watched that live, it could have been that one. The only one I actually watched live was Goldberg versus the fiend that one sent me bro it sent me to i was pissed because i was like bro you gotta be shitting me how this is this is what you do the other ones i probably would have been it would have just been sad and depressing to watch though so i'm glad i've never actually sat and watched the entire match through its entirety for both of those situations because no fuck no i no 
and i will never do that like that would have to be a torture tactic if someone wanted to get some information from me all they would have to do is make me watch the undertaker versus a uh, goldberg saudi show the at, at the saudi show they had saudi uh, the match they had in saudi the dx versus brother destruction and goldberg versus uh versus the fiend all in succession and i will tell you everything you want to know dead ass you'll get all the information you need from me before you even press play here's everything you need to know i'm not watching that don't do that to me but hey this was a uh, a pretty good one man uh we unfortunately had to go back down memory lane but the recent shows have been better and hopefully uh crown jewel this year is a pretty solid show as well but i appreciate all love support y'all showing on channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace